to look at our sewing machines and learn how they work. I've got an old sewing machine here. It's my mother-in-law's old Kenmore. I'll definitely show you how to thread an old sewing machine. And I've got a newer sewing machine here. This is a brother sewing machine. And I will also show you how to thread this machine. I find as a beginner sewer, you're probably going to end up with a sewing machine similar to this. I'm going to walk you through everything that a beginner sewer needs to know before they actually start sewing any seams. But I want you to know that the very first thing you need to do is reference that manual. I would first like to let you know that I have a link in the description down below and that link is for a free PDF download and that PDF is all about all the different sewing terms that you may come across as a beginner sewer. It's an awesome reference for you to go back to whenever you need to know a little bit more about different sewing terms as you're learning how to sew. All right, so we've got our sewing machine here. I'm going to walk through all of the features that you need to know as far as your sewing machine goes. I'll definitely have timestamps in the description down below. So if you're like, I don't need to know this part, but I would like to know about thread, or I do need to know about how to wind a bobbin, it's all linked in that description down below. So let's have a look at this sewing machine here. This is a brother sewing machine and a lot of these beginner sewing machines have been made similar to this one here. All right, so a quick overview. Just turn your sewing machine on. There should be a button on the side or on the back. And then your hand wheel is on the right hand side. Always turn that towards you, never turn that away from you. On the top of your sewing machine, you will find your bobbin winder, as well as the tension wheel that you will use when winding your bobbin. You will also have a spot where your spool of thread will go. Depending on your sewing machine, some sewing machines will have your thread laying sideways. Some sewing machines will have it where you put your thread on top like this. When you put your thread on top like this, I find it rattles and it doesn't unroll as nice as I would like it to. So I find this little felt disc very helpful. Just a little piece of felt cut in a circle, snip a hole in the center and add it to the top. Once you've placed your spool onto your sewing machine, then you will be able to thread your sewing machine. Your thread will go across the sewing machine through a little hook on the top and then through two slits on your sewing machine, down through a little hook above the sewing needle and then through the sewing needle. I will share this in more detail later on. On the sewing machine, you can find a diagram that will have all of the different stitches the sewing machine can do and their correlating numbers and sewing feet. If this is not on your sewing machine, you can find it in your sewing manual. Depending on the stitch that you choose, it will depend on what sewing foot you use, as well as what number you need to set your sewing machine to so that you are using the correct stitch. As you can see here, I can also change the length of my stitch as well as the width of my stitch. This is helpful depending on what stitch you're using. As an example, a zigzag stitch can actually be widened and the stitch length can be shortened for a very, very tight zigzag stitch. And as you can see on this particular model, it has the letter J for that particular sewing foot. So whatever stitch you choose, it will tell you what sewing foot to use. Other diagrams may just have that letter right beside the number so that you know what presser foot to use for what stitch. This here is your speed setting. As a beginner sewer, keep it as low as you can. We maybe get a little impatient and bump it up a little bit, fine, but try not to go past that medium speed because that's when mistakes happen. So I do tend to bump it up to fast when I'm actually filling my bobbin, but otherwise I do like to keep that right there at the medium. Next is this button here and it allows you to lower your needle or raise your needle. This button here will allow you to do a reverse stitch or a back stitch. It will essentially knot your thread so that your thread will not come undone as you sew your project. And this button is your start and stop button. Somewhere on your sewing machine you will find this tension wheel and it allows you to loosen or tighten your tension. As a beginner sewer you really should not have to play with this wheel too much. Just keep it in the center at that number four. A lot of sewing machines have a little section right here that you'll be able to slide off. Some actually have storage inside there. Others are just a little loose piece like this. 
The reason why you need this little piece to pop off is so that you have a narrower sewing area. You need these areas when you are doing things like sleeves, smaller projects, but for the most part with beginner sewing projects, you'll leave this on. Somewhere at the base of your sewing machine, you'll find a spot to put in your bobbin. Some will look like this and some will actually be front loading bobbins. For a sewing machine like this, you'll just pop off the top and that will give you easy access to your bobbin. And then as we move closer to the sewing machine needle itself, you'll see we've got the presser foot there. There is a switch at the back that will allow you to lift the presser foot up and down. Right behind the presser foot, there will be a button that will allow you to drop the presser foot off and on. If you have an older sewing machine, you can buy an attachment so that you'll be able to do this on that machine as well. And there is also a screw that you can turn to loosen your sewing machine needle to take it on and off. Now you have your feed dogs. Your feed dogs are underneath your presser foot. The feed dogs are these tiny sharp little teeth and they grip your fabric and move it as the sewing machine runs. Super helpful. If you find those feed dogs are not working properly, there is often a button. It's either on the side of your machine or on the back of your machine, and it will have a little symbol and it will be something like this. So make sure that your feed dogs are up for most projects. The only time people really move those feed dogs down is when they want to do free motion quilting. One more item you'll find on your sewing machine is either a little wheel, perhaps at the back of your machine, or on an older machine it might look like this, which this piece just pushes down, and then it has a little ring around the base of it that I can push down and the centerpiece pops back up. This is actually for the pressure of your presser foot, so how hard you want it pushing the fabric down towards those feed dogs. So that's a quick overview of a uh, basic sewing machine. Now let's actually get into how to thread a sewing machine. Before threading your sewing machine, it is very important to make sure that your presser foot is in the up position. So I'm going to start with the newer sewing machine and you'll take your thread and you'll place it wherever your sewing machine wants that spool to sit and then you'll bring it around and there will be a hook at the top of your sewing machine somewhere. Of course, a lot of these new sewing machines will actually have arrows that you can follow, which is what I'm doing here. I'm following all of the arrows and now this thread is just going into this little metal hook at the top. Sometimes you need to turn your hand wheel to make sure that hook is actually at the top. Once your thread gets down below, there should be a hook right above your sewing needle that you want to put that thread through, and then it will be time to put it through the needle. This sewing machine has an automatic needle threader, so what you'll do is you'll just take your thread around that top hook, then you will push down on the lever. Once your thread is pushed down, you see there's little teeth that come around the base of your needle and those little teeth have a tiny little hook in it. So you'll pull your thread through those little teeth and hold the thread upwards. While you're holding it upwards, it's actually in that hook. So when you let go of your lever, the hook will pull your thread on through your needle. And then from there, you will lay your thread through your presser foot and towards the back of your sewing machine. I'm just gonna interrupt myself here to tell you that these lessons on learning how to sew are brought to you by this beginner's guide to sewing. I created this as I was making this sewing class for you because I realized there is so much helpful information that is easier to have in a paper format sitting with your sewing machine that you can refer to when needed. I will have it linked in the description down below, so definitely check that out. And now let's get back to learning how to sew. For an older sewing machine, the most important part is to actually make sure that your take-up lever is at its highest position. To do this, you're going to turn your hand wheel towards you until you see a tiny little hook show up at the top. Then place your spool onto your spool pin and draw your thread through the thread guide on the top. Then draw the thread into the threading channel towards you, going down, around, and back up. When you get to the top, make sure your thread is on the left of that take-up lever hook and hook it around towards the right of the hook, back down. 
Then slip your thread through the needle bar and the thread guide that's closer to your needle. Then thread your needle. All right, so we've learned how to thread a sewing machine. Now let's move on and learn how to actually fill up your bobbin properly. Older sewing machines will have a push-pull clutch within the side hand wheel. This will need to be pulled out to disengage the clutch before filling your bobbin. You do not need to do this for newer sewing machines. So draw your thread from the spool around the bobbin winder tension disc and it will fit nice and snug underneath that tension disc and then you'll pull it back towards your bobbin. Then take the end of your thread and pull it through the hole in the bobbin. Make sure that for an older sewing machine, you're using these old metal bobbins here. For newer sewing machines, they like the plastic bobbin. So make sure you're using the correct bobbin for the correct sewing machine. Then place the bobbin onto the bobbin winder shaft with the end of your thread coming up from the top of the bobbin. Push the bobbin winder shaft to the right until it clicks and then holding on to the end of the thread, start your machine. You'll use your foot pedal for this. When the bobbin is slightly filled, then you can stop your machine and you'll snip off the end of that thread that you're holding upwards. From there, wind your thread until the winder stops. Remove the bobbin and clip the thread. And don't forget to push in the push-pull clutch to engage the clutch again before you start sewing. Newer sewing machines will often have the instructions printed right on the sewing machine for you. In this case, this sewing machine wants me to pull my thread across towards the tension wheel, but actually crisscross the thread, which is something I did not do for the older sewing machine. So it's tucked underneath that tension wheel there, and then it'll pull across towards where the bobbin will go on the bobbin winder shaft. Now as you can see on these newer sewing machines where the bobbin winder shaft is it actually has a little slit there with a razor that will cut your thread for you. So what you can do is similar to your old sewing machine you'll put your thread through a little hole in your bobbin or another way that you can do this is actually put your bobbin on the bobbin winder shaft right away without putting it through a little hole. Wind the thread around your bobbin five times and then tuck it underneath that little spot where it cuts your thread for you. For myself, I like to do it where I put it through the little hole of the bobbin and then I let it get cut by that bobbin winder blade. Then push the bobbin winder shaft to the right until it clicks. Then you can either use your sewing foot or the start and stop button to fill up your bobbin. And again, just let the sewing machine fill it up until it stops for you. Once your bobbin is full, then push that winder shaft to the left to take your bobbin off and of course, snip your thread. All right, so we've filled up our bobbin. Now it's time to put our bobbin into our sewing machine. Unfortunately, I can only show you this in the drop-in system as I don't actually have a sewing machine with the front loaded bobbin. So take your bobbin and make sure the thread is being pulled counterclockwise from the bobbin, then drop it into the base. There will be a slit at the front of your bobbin that you'll want to put your thread into and then pull your thread towards the back for the older sewing machine. For the newer sewing machines, follow their guide fully. Next, what you'll do is you'll make sure your top thread has already been threaded. Then you'll take your hand wheel and turn it towards you. As you do this, the needle will go down and up in one motion and it will actually hook your bobbin thread. From there, you can use your fingers or just use something pointy that you can get under the presser foot to scoop that thread upwards through that base plate. As a beginner sewer, we can get a bit overwhelmed when we're looking for our thread for our project. The reason being, of course, when you go to a fabric store, there are so many different thread options to choose from. So I just want to make it simple. As a beginner sewer, look for an all-purpose sewing thread, preferably something with polyester in it. My favorite sewing thread, and I will have this linked down below, is Guterman thread. It's 100% polyester. I have never had an issue with with this thread and I've never had it break on me. The polyester thread is just nice and strong. There are lots of different brands out there as far as threads go. Coates & Clark is also a quality thread brand. This particular Coates & Clark that I have is 63% polyester, 37% cotton, and I find that this thread works just as well and is just as strong. So just make sure that it's all-purpose thread and that there's polyester in it. Something that you do not want to do is to buy 
buy thread from a dollar store or other places like Ikea, those threads can be cheap, they work maybe for some hand mending, but they're not going to work well going through your sewing machine. So I would suggest avoiding those. Now, a little secret that I want to show you that comes with some of these spools, not all of them, is how you can hold your thread within them. So this particular one by Coates and Clark is a very simple basic spool and it has a little slit in there that you'll just slide your thread on in and it'll hold your thread just fine until you need it again. Some of the spools are a bit fancier like this one here and what you'll do is you'll actually pop the top off, well not off, but you'll pop it up and then you'll be able to access your thread. And then when you're done for your project, you'll just be able to wind your thread into that open little section there and then just push that piece down and it's nicely holding your thread in place so it's not going to unwind. Another type of spool is like this one here and you'll just pop off the bottom and some people like to use this for storage, but the nice thing about it is it's kind of used in the same way. So you can just wind your thread around there and then push it in and it will hold your thread in place. So that's also a nice little trick that beginner sewers often don't know. And one final little trick, when you're using your spool, often when you buy your spool, it will come with little stickers on the end. You can just push your little uh, stick on your sewing machine through, but what I actually recommend doing is pulling that sticker off. I haven't done that for this one because this I use for hand sewing, but this one I have taken the sticker off both ends and it just runs smoother on my sewing machine. So that's an extra little trick there for you as well. And that my friends is lesson one of five lessons on learning how to sew. So we've learned how to use our sewing machine. Next week we are going to learn all of the beginner basics on actually sewing those seams and putting a project together. So I hope that you'll hit that notification bell and subscribe so that you don't miss those future tutorials. And as always, I really do hope you have a wonderful day. Bye for now.